Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. In this video, I'll be building an automated home weather station using a Raspberry Pi computer, some satellite radio equipment, and hopefully some basic weather or environmental instruments. Yeah, if you saw some of my previous videos, you might recognize what we're up to out here. We've got the homemade TV rabbit ears set up, and we're listening for weather satellites. Now, if you did pay attention to my previous videos, you might be wondering, where's my fancy QFH egg beater antenna that I made in a previous one? Well, there was a violent windstorm, and it fell off the roof. So, it's a little smashed up right now. I need to rebuild it anyway. I don't think the tuning was quite right, and it never quite worked the way I hoped it would. Okay, so my QFH antenna here is kind of garbage. I put it together in a hurry. It worked for a while. Now it doesn't work. And try to build a better one actually using some copper coil. Got some angle fittings, and I've got a guide from US Radio Guy's website that uh, shows how to do this a little better. It's a lot better than the last one. This is looking a lot more like a space egg beater. I just picked up this Raspberry Pi 4, which is the next version up from the 3s that I've been using. And it looks about the same. It's just a little bit faster, and I think the specs are a little bit better. So I might end up using this for my weather system. Okay, we're setting up the RTL SDR drivers and software on the Raspberry Pi. This system will just start recording when the satellite passes overhead. It will process that recording into a weather map, and it will output it into a folder. As usual, I will put the links to all the walkthrough guides for how I did this on the description below, so you can check it out for yourself. Now, one thing that I am doing slightly differently from the walkthrough guide that I used is to add this dash T flag into my code. And that will enable the bias T, or the external power from the RTL dongle, and what that means is that it will power an external device. In my case, the Sawbird NOAA LNA. And that little LNA is a combination filter and amplifier that's going to make the signal a lot stronger and cleaner for this application. Now, I think my filter took some damage when the antenna fell over, so I'm going to have to open this up and uh, maybe do some soldering because something's loose now. Okay, the little LED module is definitely loose, and I think that my SMA connector is a little loose, so. Let's see if I can tack those down better. So putting everything right here at the antenna is supposed to be best for optimizing signal strength and minimizing line loss of any antenna cables. So I still need an Ethernet cord and a power supply for the Raspberry Pi. And then I'm also hoping to put some other weather instruments in and around this box so that the Pi can provide not just satellite weather pictures but some real-time on-the-ground weather information as well. Okay, so I'm getting pretty good coverage uh, east and west, but my north and south coverage is still really bad. So I found a few other tricks I can try, like putting the uh, SDR directly onto the Raspberry Pi instead of with an extension USB. That means I'm going to need a bigger waterproof box so that everything fits in there. So my little waterproof box is not big enough to directly plug in the SDR to the Pi, because it just doesn't fit. So I want one slightly bigger. I don't have one slightly bigger. I've got one really big. And 
This was free, so I don't care if I use it for this project. It's a little too big, honestly, but maybe I can stuff some other equipment in here in the future. I've got my new and improved antenna with new and improved electronics box. Got our Raspberry Pi, our SDR, DC filter because we're now powering the LNA with USB from down here. And we've got a little 12 volt fan so the uh, fresh air comes in here, hot air goes out the bottom, or at least that's the idea. And then I've covered the entire thing in foil tape to um, try to make it shed heat a little better because it's just going to be up here in the sun and that black plastic would otherwise soak up heat and probably overheat my electronics. So hopefully between the tinfoil coating and the little fan this will stay nice and cool all summer. Alright, so I am getting some good images off of that satellite system and I'm getting a little bit more north-south coverage for good passes, but I'm still not satisfied. I feel like I was getting a lot more coverage into Canada before. I'm going to go ahead and add one more amplifier in the circuit along the way. I'm going to power this with the Bias T, have the other amp powered with USB, and uh, have that DC blocker in between them, and maybe that will give me even more signal. Okay, we're going to re-enable that Bias T that I disabled when I was going with USB power. So now when this uh, script runs, it'll turn on the bias T, do the reception, and then turn it off again afterwards. Alright, so I've left my weather system running all day, and we've got a few uh, example images. Got the uh, thermal, like this, and some of the uh, regular visible light imagery. I'm noticing um, it's really inconsistent. I'm using the command line version of WX to image, and some of the images are this, you know, really nice high coverage. Uh, there's a lot of north-south coverage on it, and uh, some of them are very small for passes that should be just about as good. They uh, are not getting as much north-south coverage, and then uh, some of them have really terrible coverage, but then it includes all the static at the beginning and end. Normally it crops that out, but uh, I don't know why in some cases it decides to keep the static, and in some cases it uh, decides to crop it. I'm also not getting a precipitation data out of this command line WXT image. Um, this is supposed to be the MSA version with precipitation, and uh, does not seem to be working. If I pull it up in a desktop WXT image, I'm actually getting those uh, false colored areas showing uh, where it's raining or snowing. All right, we're going to try the Russian satellite while we've got this all set up. So it wasn't really the best time to be uh, looking at this satellite, but the quality and uh, the quantity of uh, image that I got from Meteor this time is a little better than last time. So I guess I'm pretty happy with this new antenna. can zoom in on Lake Winnipeg there up in Canada. Alright, so I played around with automating this even further, and I found someone's project online called uh, Raspberry Noah V2. I did try the V1 version, but uh, this one is a little slicker, and it seems to work a little better. So this actually schedules the upcoming passes, shows you the passes with details, and actually shows you a little map of uh, what those passes look like, built right into a web panel, so that's cool and then you can go over to your captures and it creates a database of each captured image and then it generates uh, different enhancements through the uh, WXT image so you can get your precipitation you can get uh, your infrared and you can get all the different enhancements that you would normally get it also gives you this little spectrogram which is cool and that shows you the signal strength of the NOAA signal as it comes in. Mine's a little washed out in the middle. I might need to actually turn down my gain because I am running two LNAs. So I might be getting too much gain at the highest point of the pass. I'm not sure what happened with this one. Um, I'm getting this weird uh, banding interference. And I'm also getting um, 
some of these that don't automatically crop. I don't know what the difference is between the ones that do and don't automatically crop in here. And I'm still not getting anything for Meteor. Um, my spectrogram looks pretty empty. I'm not sure what happened here. Maybe I need to tweak the gain again. But we'll play around with that some more. So you can find this automated script and the web panel on uh, GitHub under Jack Hokey Raspberry Noah V2. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing the name of the coder. It's pretty useful. It's fairly straightforward to set up. I did still have to manually enable my bias T as I'm still having some issues with that. But once I got that going, uh, it seems to be working pretty smoothly. All right, so I spent so much time uh, tweaking and debugging these satellite downloads that I haven't actually bought or installed any uh, environmental sensors on my supposed weather station. It's a little slow to do any changes or tweaks with these NOAA satellites since they only come over twice a day. Um, you see an issue, you do your updates, and you have to wait 12 hours for the next set of passes. So I'm going to stop this video now. Uh, we're going to come back to this once I do get some environmental sensors. And I'm going to update the web panel or modify it a little bit so I have some of the environmental data, some of the climate data, uh, maybe a webcam, maybe some other stuff that I can throw in there, and make more of an all-in-one weather station. Thanks for sticking with me so far through this, and uh, make sure to like and subscribe so you stay tuned for the next one. We'll see you next time.